What scam is so normal people don't even realize? Mobile game ads that show gameplay of a Call of Duty or Skyrim style game, but in reality, are just a spin-off of Candy Crush. Rent to own furniture and appliances. Manufacturers refusing documentation to private repair enterprises and requiring you to get your products fixed by the dealer. Basically, the reason for the right to repair movement. The Verizon $1 scam. Verizon tacked on a $1 fee on to 8% of their customers' bills each month so over the course of the year, they did it to every customer, about 150 million. Their rationale was. 50% wouldn't notice and just pay the charge or would notice and wouldn't spend any time fighting a $1 charge. 50% would notice the charge and call to have it removed. Of those, 35% would get frustrated while on the call and give up. This added approximately $120 million to the bottom line each year, three total, until court. Once caught, they paid a $25 million fine. Those registries that people pay money to name a star. I keep seeing advertisements on FB4 companies that will give you official Lord or Ladyship for like $50, based on giving you the title to a small parcel of land somewhere like Scotland. I googled one of them once, and the first result was a breakdown of why the company is fraudulent and doesn't actually have access to any land anywhere. Funerals and everything to do with them. The funeral industry has insane pricing. Some of the funeral homes and vendors are even predatory, getting grieving families to pay upwards of tens of thousands of dollars because that's what the deceased would have wanted. You didn't love your father at all, did you, was the question that had me slam my fist down on the table. My dad wanted a cardboard box cremation and no memorial. He got a cardboard box cremation and no memorial with zero upselling from a different cremation service. The state AG got a complaint about the first cremation service. Paying for cable TV. The whole idea of paying was to create a revenue stream separate from that of marketing. There are a few out there, HBO, I think, but generally we pay to access the content and still have to spend 20% of the time sitting through chimericals. Then streaming comes in, and we're free of advertisements again, for a bit. Now YouTube has tons of ads and other streaming services are talking about adding ads as well. Annual college tuition increases. Why aren't they held to a competitive pricing model as opposed to having to take out a mortgage to go to school? Everyone wants to talk about government paying for college education, but there is no conversation on why is it that expensive anyway. Especially when some units have endowments in the billions, that just the interest on those funds could literally pay the tuition for everyone that goes through the door. Bottled water, like Dasani, especially in places like an amusement park that mark ups the price a shocking amount. Also the average markup of bottled water is 4000%, which is freaking outrageous because water is literally free most places. I'm fuzzy on the details, but Warped Tour got in a lot of legal trouble here in Canada because of water. They were in the habit of taking any water bottles or drinks from you when they checked your bag at the gate. Then you get inside and everything costs money. The energy drinks and pop cost less than the water, so most people would buy those instead. One woman bought energy drinks all day because it was a hot summer day and she wanted to save money for merch. She had a heart attack and died. Now they aren't allowed to confiscate water at the gate. I just paid for the privilege of setting up my router. My cable company recently started trying to charge me for my router, which I own. I got a notice saying, we noticed an error in billing and we will be charging you for the equipment rental starting in December. The freak you will, I have every receipt from every cable or phone transaction I've ever done for that exact reason. I paid outright for my router, so I wouldn't be renting their crappy equipment at $12 a month. Now they want to charge me for my own property. After receiving that notice I hopped right onto customer service to get it resolved, and they directed me to their loyalty department, because they could best handle it over there. I cut off the conversation and just cancelled my service. Cable companies are pure scum. Cat food. Look at the cat food at a random store and see how the design brags about all the healthy vegetables they've crammed into your obligate carnivore's diet. Then check out the ingredients and see how corn, rice, etc. are often the first ingredients. 
pet foods market toward humans by trying to appeal to human sensibilities, not genuine desire to provide your cat with the best diet. I've been using Costco cat food for a while because it's cheap and convenient, but I recently figured I should look into getting a better food. Turns out the Costco food, with fish as the first two ingredients, is better than 90% of the other stuff I looked at. I was pretty surprised. All MLMs they prey on insecure women, specifically army wives to give in. It's almost like a cult. Guaranteeing new friends, lots of free trips, and make $20,000 a month. They are not your friends, the trips are only free if you become a top earner, and the only way to make $20,000 a month is to get at minimum 100 people in your team that work every single day. Most sales from those companies are from the salesperson who is buying it to sell it. And they tell you that you have to buy more to sell more. It's really gross. Edit. Wow thank you to all the awards and responses. I wanted to add something I've been researching MLMS for years. And I want to make what I mean about insecure women clear. Insecure. Meaning. Sat. Lonely. Stressed. Not financially stable. Not guaranteed home. Military family that moves a lot. I've been to these meetings. I've listened in on calls on how to get more recruits. I'm repeating what they have said on these calls and meetings. Sat. Lonely. Insecure. And I also do not mean all insecure women take the bait. I myself am extremely insecure in all which ways, and have never joined a MLM, even though I've been offered a bunch. I hate that they are so predatory towards these people. I want to make something else clear, in no way judge the women and men and non-binary that take these opportunities. When you don't know where your next paycheck is coming from, and you have mouths to feed, they make the offer so tempting. I would hope people choose a different job, but it's definitely tempting especially for stay-at-home moms. Turn your judgment to these disgusting companies and the people higher up in those companies that make people feel like their lives are about to become so much better. College. Taking dozens of general education classes completely unrelated to your degree is a massive racket in my opinion. If my schooling wasn't paid for by my employer, I certainly wouldn't pay for it myself. I've never understood the whole major slash minor system they have in the US. I did 4 years of agricultural engineering. I had a couple of math classes that aren't useful to me now, one class of ethics more centered on engineering, one class of computer science really MATLAB, and one language class. That's it. All the others classes were either related to agriculture or engineering. Sociology wasn't an option, neither was history or literature, or whatever else that has nothing to do with science. Student loans. What started as an assistance program to help democratize higher education, so it wasn't, just for the super wealthy has turned into a limitless source of profits for lenders and colleges, even state slash public universities. Schools are now immune to market price pressure. No matter how high they raise fees, prospective students will always be able to get enough loan money to meet them. On the lender's side, they have no incentive to screen either borrowers or the schools, because the loans are almost impossible to absolve. You can default, but you still owe for life, it's some of the only debt you can't discharge in bankruptcy. So every lender is happy to give a six-figure check to wide-eyed 18-year-olds, who have near zero real-world or job experience, and have been sold a wing and dream by college recruiters. The only person who bears any risk in the whole system is the students who are told from day one of kindergarten by parents, teachers, TV, every motivational speaker that drives by, and absolutely the recruiters, that you go to college or you're a complete waste. Whatever it takes you go get that degree. I may get heat for this, but, the sneaker slash shoe industry. Holy crap you don't need masses of fancy artistic looking running shoes collected in boxes, that you go and spend $1000 to $10,000 on at a swap meet. You may as well be collecting very expensive Funko Pops. You're not going to wear them, and if you wear them, you're only going to worry about them while you wear them, and the markup is insanity. I know people who do this, and they are leveraging money they don't really have on something that's going to sit on their shelf and do nothing. It's bad enough that shit like Skechers, the literal Kmart brand of shoe, cost over $125 a pop for a really crappily assembled shoe, but to spend in the thousands for what is essentially stamp collecting is nonsensical bordering on obsessive compulsive. And don't get me started on women's shoes by design houses. 
I saw someone dish out $1,800 for buttons or something what are you wearing those foot destroying shoes for, and why would some leather and glue and plastic cost 1800 bucks? Holy crap what a racket. One that isn't mentioned much, that I've ever noticed, also doesn't generate much sympathy, since it scams businesses instead of individuals the BBB is pretty much a scam. They can collect reports on businesses who aren't members, plus merely not being accredited, is supposed to be bad. But businesses have to pay for the privilege of being accredited. As far as what it actually does nothing really. I worked for a large company at the executive response level before, responding to FCC and BBB complaints among other duties, and generally you just have to summarize your response of what action was taken, it's akin to sharing account notes basically. So essentially complaints don't do anything at all. Nothing is going to happen. If you make a BBB complaint in 99% of cases, it's just yelling to get an officially posted response of the same answer you didn't like the first time. However, if you do not answer them, or even refuse to pay for the useless service, then you get dinged, because BBB accreditation is supposed to mean something. It's pretty much the white collar equivalent of a protection racket. I'm sure there are very very rare cases where legitimate complaints were resolved, but most of these could have been merely by asking for a supervisor. Filter out those cases, then you have an absolutely minuscule amount that perhaps could be considered legit, meaning I had to tell supervisors slash management they did something wrong slash correct any actual issue. And for that minuscule number, I'm pretty sure you could always find alternative pathways that still didn't justify extorting businesses for the privilege. I'm not sure that I can think of one single good thing that was their case in a few years worth of handling these complaints. The only thing it is good for in the slightest is spotting complete and obvious scams. But even then, from anything I've ever seen personally at least, it's literally obvious scams, meaning you shouldn't have needed the BBB to notice. I'm talking like a computer software company that sells burnt cheap copies of Windows and such super obvious stuff. And yet for this minuscule service, they get to charge most businesses for protection accreditation, because a great BBB rating is ingrained as good, and no accreditation has successfully been ingrained as bad. Also consumers are trained to think a complaint hurts a business rating, it does not at all. Not responding to a complaint is the only thing that hurts the rating, or not bothering to pay to be accredited. I mean if you tried to start your own business on the same sort of model, I'm pretty sure you could end up with charges lol. The closest thing is literally a mob protection racket. You can pay us for protection, from bad slash no accreditation, and in exchange we won't beat you up, declare in neon letters, that you didn't pay us to be accredited. Makes no sense how they are highly regarded. Digital media that you own. You never actually own it. Any epics or movies or games etc. that you own but don't download, even if you can download, but they aren't DRM free, you are merely renting for an extended period and do not actually own. At any point Amazon, etc. can pull their servers and you're left with nothing. At any point Apple can upgrade the DRM software to something not compatible with your system and you're left with nothing. At any point Google can shut down the service for the fun of it and you're left with nothing. And any attempts to circumvent DRM on downloaded content that you own, so that you can continue to use it in any of the above situations, is a grey area legally speaking in many parts of the world. You could, in theory, be arrested for trying to use something you own. Anytime you buy something digital, know that you're actually renting it, and it can disappear at any time without notice or compensation. Fashion, but also just clothing in general. No pockets on female clothes? More purses get sold. Thin layers for women? Have to buy more layers. It gets marketed as being fashionable, but the clothing industry could roll out a marketing campaign for baggy rugged clothing tomorrow, and get it trending, if they wanted to. Also, the clothing industry is a cesspool of child labor, human trafficking, and it has some of the highest carbon emissions and water waste of any industry on the planet, way worse than flying. One cotton t-shirt takes thousands of gallons of water to produce. Almost any synthetic fabric is a type of plastic, and you release microplastics upon washing. On top of all that, we have repressive cultural norms and laws regarding the necessity of wearing clothing that come from Puritans and Victorians who thought table legs had to be covered and ankles were sexy. 
The idea that you should be embarrassed to be naked in front of other people is a cultural phenomenon, not instinct, and you can look at pretty much any tropical tribe to verify this fact, that humans are actually generally normal around other naked humans. Like and subscribe for more edit videos.